Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm in the middle of my, or I was in the middle of my channel sabbatical, but I was inspired to do this video because it just makes more sense to do it now while I have a passion to talk about it. And it doesn't really make much sense to do a video about it after my sabbatical ends, so, uh, here I am, taking a break from my channel sabbatical for August to talk about, um, uh, one of my big pet peeves that's been going on in the games industry right now, and this is the talk of how console exclusivity is bad. So, there has been a narrative building up from parts of the industry, namely Xbox, and particularly Phil Spencer at Xbox, that exclusives are detrimental to the wider gaming industry, which I think is nonsense. And this has been a narrative that's been building up for quite a while now. So naturally the followers of his cult of personality have been parodying his talking points. And what I find funny is that things have reached another level because it was announced yesterday at the time of recording this at Gamescom, that's going on right now, that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is going to be coming to PS5 in the spring of next year. And a lot of diehard Xbox fans are understandably not very happy about this decision. And... This is different from the four games that were announced to be hopping over to other consoles earlier this year, because this is the first time that Xbox have on stage a console exclusive, and then they go ahead and tell people, hey, uh, this is only going to be a timed console exclusive. It's actually coming to PS5 later on, which I, I was I was stunned that they actually did that on stage, publicly, that they didn't just wait until after Xbox had released Indiana Jones on only Xbox and PC, or they tried to hide it away in some blog post talking about Indiana Jones. No, Jeff Keighley, they, they had Mr. Keighley, Mr. Human Face of the AAA games industry, go on stage and reveal that Indiana Jones is going to be coming to PS5 sometime in the spring of next year. This to me is a whole nother level of Xbox is slowly becoming a third party platform. Because I've, I've never seen them make an announcement like this this early. And I know some people are probably going to go, oh well Doom the Dark Ages, you know they said it was going to be a PS5 a, a game as well. Yeah, but that was also at the same time as announcing the damn thing. Indiana Jones has been a point of contention because it's kind of had this wishy-washy thing in the beginning where it's like, well, is it exclusively on Xbox or is it not? And it's like, yeah, it is, but it's going to be coming to PS5 later and we're going to be open about it now. Which, again, is... I was shocked that they actually did that. And it might surprise some of you that I don't think Indiana Jones going to PlayStation is a good thing, in my opinion, of course. I think console exclusives are a good thing. They do matter in this industry, and I'm tired of this narrative, ironically from one of the big three console manufacturers, that console exclusivity is a bad thing. I. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. And, I, and then, and this is the thing too that annoys me is that people that say that they like console exclusives because it promotes, you know, getting one console over another. It's like that's a bad, bad thing to think. I come from a time where there were plenty of games where if you wanted to play it you had to get a very specific expensive machine in order to play it. If you wanted to play Knights of the Old Republic, or Halo, or Blinks the Time Cat, you get a fucking OG Xbox. If you wanted to play Luigi's Mansion, or Super Mario Sunshine, or for a time Resident Evil 4, you get a fucking GameCube. If you want to play Ratchet and Clank, 
Jack and Dexter, Sly Cooper, you get a PlayStation 2. And I think that's a good thing because that promotes competition among the big three. That promotes them wanting to be better than the others by building and creating their own really high quality software because that is what sells game consoles. I heard from one Xbox content creator that, and I don't, don't want to name who it is, but they said something along the lines of, oh, I want the future of games to not be exclusives. I want people to choose consoles based on their services. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are we doing here? Are, are, really? You want, uh, you want people to choose one console over another because of platform services, not because of the games, the things that you buy a fucking console for. What kind of clown shit is that? That's so stupid. The thing too that bothers me about Indiana Jones going over to PlayStation is that I think it dilutes Xbox's image as a console with its own unique identity where the only way to get in is to buy one. Am I speaking crazy here? It, it's, it, why? Why would I buy a console if I didn't have exclusive software that I could enjoy on it? And console exclusives have historically turned things around at some point in the histories of all of the big three. Look at Nintendo at the beginning of the Switch. They had just come off one of the worst generations ever with the Wii U. And yet, here we are with the Switch. What is released during the first less than a year of the Switch? You had Breath of the Wild, which sold like gangbusters. You had Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is still, to this very day, the highest selling Switch exclusive of all time. You have Splatoon 2, which sold quite a bit, and you have another big heavy hitter in Super Mario Odyssey. So, without those games, the Switch would have probably never taken off in the meteoric rise that it did. You had PlayStation during the PS3 recovery phase, during like 2008 to 2010, where the thing that really started to turn that console around were the exclusives. You had things like Metal Gear Solid 4, you had Uncharted 2, you had God of War 3, and more. Xbox themselves, during the early days of the console's existence, they had a little game, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, called Halo? They had a game called Morrowind? <laughs> the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, hello? Fable, hello? So, this idea that console exclusivity is this bad thing, this bad anti-consumer thing, is just nonsense. I am so tired of this. I am tired of this narrative that Phil Spencer, he's got like a sniper pointed at his head, that he has to come out there and say these talking points, and the people that gargle his balls fucking go, oh my god, my dear leader has said the most amazing thing ever, that console exclusivity is a bad thing. Oh my god, I, I absolutely agree, thank you, thank you dear leader, thank you for telling us this, this gospel of truth that you are spreading out to the internet far and wide. Get the fuck out of here with that. I think Phil Spencer is doing a bad job at trying to make Xbox's own problems sound industry-wide, where... Just very recently, at the time of recording this, he put out this, there was this interview with him at Gamescom where he said just things like, again, the, oh, I have to run a business. Oh, you know, the industry is changing. Oh, you know, everybody, you know, I don't think, you know, console, consoles are going to be a thing of the past and blah, 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 his usual PR corpo bullshit. And it's like, no, dude, it just seems to be you are the problem here. When you look at Nintendo, I mean, they're doing well, and they're stingy as fuck when it comes to their IP. You have PlayStation, I mean, this, granted, they're starting to experiment a little bit with things like LEGO Horizon Adventures and, you know, putting their, their games on PC after a, a specific time frame. 
but they're not going gung-ho with it like you guys are and trying to frame it as oh uh, we're trying to get ahead of the curve on the industry this is us this is an industry-wide problem it's not our problem it's not an xbox problem it's everyone else's problem anyway i'm going back to being offline for another week i'll catch you all in september <laughs> bye